No, I learnt singing when I was younger and in the school choir, but I haven't sang like for about 20 years because I've got one son and I wanted to give him everything. So something for me. So I'm giving back to me now, which is like a bit of a shock because I haven't done that for such a long time. My name's Lynn. I've got Parkinson's and doing something rhythmic helps. I, was, I think I was in the school choir when I was about seven or eight or something like that. And when I saw this in the seniors magazine this week, I thought, now that's rhythmic, I'll go and see. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, it's been wonderful. Sing in the car a lot, sing with my grandchildren, that's always a wonderful time. But to do this, when I've often thought I should go and have singing lessons because I enjoy singing, uh, and finally now at 60 I've finally done it, so better late than never as they say. Recently I had my 60th and I was terrified to get up and sing, um, thanks to Andrea. <laughs> I attempted it and um, it was really good. It has been a fabulous opportunity to do things for others but also to do something for yourself that really does make a difference to how you feel about yourself at the end of the day or at the end of the week. So I think a lot of us have had this talent or, or joy of singing hidden away for a long time and, and not done anything with it. I'm Andrea Zabo and I started uh, Sing Sisters probably 13 years ago and initially I started it because I'm a singing teacher and I had lots of mothers coming, dropping the kids off for lessons but I could see that the mothers probably would have liked to have to sing themselves. I think it's a chance just to express, to open up, let sound out because a lot of the times, particularly women, have been told to be seen and not heard in our demographic because it's predominantly women over 50 around 30 to 55, 60. And that seen and not heard thing has kept people quiet for most of their lives. So this is a chance when they can actually now open up and express and make sound with no repercussion, just make sound for pure joy of singing. Whether it sounds good or sounds bad, we don't judge here, it's just what it is. And what happens when you sort of crack that experience open and let a bit of light into that space which has been dark before? Well, it can. I've had some women actually crying because it was such an emotional release for them to finally be able to let go, relax and just open up. Um, a lot of laughter then too because they've realised that they've got that ability within them and they hadn't experienced it before, so there's a lot of joy and, and surprise. But basically it's just a, a, a lovely experience overall because the soul's getting a chance to be heard. How does it feed into that feeling of connection to community? If you're singing in more than two people, or singing at any one time, a chemical in the body called oxytocin is released. And that's what? So hang on a minute, you don't get the oxytocin if it's just one person? No, it what? needs to be two or I more. I did know that. Yeah, two or more and then the oxytocin is released. That's the communal side of it. Wow, but it yeah. still feels good to sing in the car by yourself but something else happens when you're singing in a group. Absolutely. It's the oxytocin. So you'll probably get dopamine and good feelings, you know, of, of um, serotonin. when you're Some of the lesser yourself. brain drugs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, when you're in a group, it's the oxytocin. And then when you've got women together, a whole bunch of women that have shared experiences from motherhood to whatever, there's a camaraderie there and then that builds friendships and also in the community, because we go out into the community, we bring the uh, round table singers, which is the weekly group into nursing homes, shopping centres at Christmas to sing Christmas carols, the mayor's Christmas carols, all that sort of thing. So we get into the community and we allow each other to share our experiences as part of this community on the Gold Coast. One of the people I just spoke to said that they were part of the weekly group as well and uh, were performing as part of a, was it a mega choir with Glenn Shorrock? Yeah, it's called a mass choir and that project was um, brought about to raise awareness for mental health, particularly among men and boys. So uh, choirs from all over Australia came together last Saturday at, uh, in Brisbane. There was about 3,000 singers and we all sang to back... Uh, Glenn Shorrock, and a phenomenal experience. And a couple of years ago, we actually backed Johnny Farnham doing You're the Voice, and one of the girls got off stage and actually said, you might have to edit this, that was better than sex. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of joy in that experience. 
if you can talk, you can sing. Uh, and a lot of the time, it's the person's own judgment of themselves and their voice that's getting in the way. And when they climb that mountain and get over that, then it's free flowing from there. The main thing is to have fun and just go for it.